Our ICO is not an initial coin offering, like most ICOs, it's an initial community offering. There's two main reasons for that. One is that our currency design is not about coins. It's not coin-centric or token-centric. It's agent-centric. Even though for the ICO, we are offering temporary tokens, ERC-20 tokens. And it functions as a receipt for the fuel that they bought. That receipt will then be redeemed for HoloFuel after Holo launches. And when they redeem that receipt, their account gets credited and the Holo account gets debited because it's not coins created from nothing. It's actually a double entry accounting system. So Holo will end up in debt the amount of money we raised, which makes sense, right? Like <laughs> it actually holds us to account for the money that we raised. But it also congruent with our whole approach for the ethical ICO is it's not about the coins, it's actually about the community. I think the base level difference that matters is the fact that we're not designing this so that we can get rich off of it. We are designing a system that we believe will thrive. And so how do we make it win-win-win across the board for people to participate so that this is an enlivening, engaging space and community? And so thinking through who are all the players in the space and, and what are their needs and how can we be of service to them is at the root of the design. A lot of people think because people will come and buy your coin that now you've found your user base. But if your offering is sold out in 30 seconds, you didn't get much of a user base. And just because somebody will buy a gambling chip, especially if they have, you know, crypto billions and they need to diversify, doesn't mean they care about your product at all. It doesn't mean you've found your user base just because you got some money. So we really wanted to figure out how can we make sure that we're reaching the people that are going to run this network. What our Indiegogo campaign does is connects to our initial community offering. And what it does is it proves the demand of the currency that we're selling in the community offering. And we're doing this because we're trying to act responsibly. This is one of the patterns of currency that, you, that, that needs to be in the world, which is responsible issuance of currency, which means that you only issue currency in direct correlation with the value that's behind that currency. And in this case, the value behind the currency is what we're building, the whole community. And that is an indicator of how many hosters there are, how many developers there are in that community. And so that's, those two things are connected. So we have the infrastructure, and now this flow comes in, uh, and the flow, the currency for the ICO, relates to this infrastructure. So the more that there are devices being sold, developers engaging, the more tokens that we're releasing in the ICO. So we're starting at 2.5 million euros, and then thereafter, every purchase in the crowdfunding releases an amount of currency in the ICO. We've made it hard for whales to just suck it up all at once. It's gonna be spread over many days. You can't buy more than 10% of the supply. You get things reserved from you, for you if you've become a host or a dev. So we, we've taken a lot of care to have this serve and reach the community. The impact in the world is that we have created a space that's more human. There is a larger community that's ready for this, that wants to build with us and believes that this is the right pathway and so we can begin co-creating with that community. It's totally enlivening. For us, it was just a, a really healthy way to make sure people aren't just showing up to gamble because we don't think that's a, a healthy community. We get to a world in which the, the interactions that we're doing at this global scale are human-centric as opposed to money-centric. To me, that matters a lot in creating a world that works for more of us.